Martin's outdoor area, aka my decking. Uh, two reasons that I'm live outside. The first one is because it feels like I'm in the centre of a volcano and it's hot. Thank you, sir. Um, the second reason is because I've just finished priming um, a piece inside that's quite large and it's taking up quite a lot of my space. So I thought I would paint outside with you. I've got a mic on, but it's a wired mic. So I'm hoping that you can hear me. There won't be any issues with my mic not working. Um, but please bear in mind that I'm outside and there might be some background noise because I've got birds in a tree here. I've also got a very um, needy dog that whenever I sit down, she just feels the need to just come and lie on me and it's hot it's hot she's hot i'm hot it's not even that sunny today it's um and if you can hear that shrieking noise in the background that's actually peacocks i live in a little village in the center of the uk and we have uh, a family of peacocks that just wander around if you follow me on social media you might have seen them at the weekend one was actually here on my decking just wandering around at the weekend um so that's the weird shrieking noise in the background it's not a child it's not somebody in distress it's a peacock and they make very odd noises so um i'm here with bella today outside I'm pretty sure it's hotter out than it is in. I'm not going to lie. Um, you'll all laugh at me because it's only 25 degrees. But that feels like the surface of the sun in the UK. We're not used to it. We don't have air con. I've got the windows open. That's about it. That's about as far as it goes in the UK. We're not equipped. Roads are melting. That's how bad it is. And I'm not kidding, it's actually in the news that... Ro Bella, you need to stop being needy. It's actually in the news that roads are melting and they're sending gritter lorries out to spread sand on the roads that are melting. We just can't handle it here in the UK. Anyway, Bella, can you go and lie down, please? Oh, that's just not the one, is it? Okay. Oh, she's just catching a fly for us. Live on camera, please don't. Um, Bella, she's a little bit unpredictable, as you can tell. Go on, go and lie down. Um, very obedient, obviously. Anyway, we're here with my coffee table. So if you've been following along, it's taken a little bit of a turn. I've also got some, there was ice in here. It's melting very quickly. <laughs> oh, I've got water, because I'm not kidding. This is not a glow, this is sweat. I'm very hot. So, if you've been following along with the coffee table, you know it took a turn, and we kind of started over, and I'm trying to get it done as quick as I can, because it's in my way. It's an awkward set size for my workshop. It's low, it's wide. I keep banging my legs on it, and I need it out of the way. So, I'm gonna do a layer of color here with you. Um, somebody guessed correctly on my YouTube channel, the colour that I was going to use next and won themselves a little haul of Dixie Bell products, which was cool. So the next colour I'm going to use is the Gulf, which is actually very close to my nail varnish. This is more like mermaid tail, I feel. Um, and you know me, I'm a blues and greens kind of gal, so I couldn't resist that colour. Um, so, really, really quickly recap, because I can't stand out here, sit out here for long, I'm so hot. We were going to do this in kind of a flip kind of style, very quick, fodden, modern farmhouse, not a fodden man, man house, that's not a word. Modern farmhouse kind of vibe. And the top didn't want to be stained, didn't, wasn't happening. It, the, it's veneer, it was lifting, it was damaged. So I've got a technique, AKA this one, that will help cover up anything that you might have that's a bit damaged, that's sort of not repairable, but still, perfectly functional. So um, this is the technique. So we started out with a base layer of drop cloth, which is the 
off-white colour that you can see here. Drop cloth mixed with sea spray and we made a really, really textured base. Hence the reason it covers up that, that sort of, those imperfections. The sea spray adds texture to the surface and is really forgiving for pieces with damage. Then I went in with Honky Tonk Red. Yeah, it looks a terrible mess at the moment. Terrible. Uh, but bear with it's hopefully not going to turn out terrible. Um, and the next colour that I'm going to use is that pretty turquoise that I've just shown you. But I'm also, I've got a candle here because what I'm going to do is just use a candle, which is obviously wax. I'm going to use that and just run it along the edge of the piece. Just along the real sort of edges around the edges of the drawer and what this is going to do is it's going to act like a wax resist so obviously chalk mineral paint is water based and this is wax wax and oil and water wax and water they don't mix so by adding a very small amount of this wax on the edges what it means is when I go in with my next color which is going to be this one the areas that I've put my candle wax um, it's going to resist this blue colour so that when I distress, you're going to get a kind of purer red underneath. So you'll be able to see the red when I distress back because it won't allow the blue to sit on top of the areas that I've put the wax. So that's what I mean by a wax resist. So if you really want to have visible layers, if you're layering up a piece, doing something similar technique wise to this, um, use a little bit of wax this is just a normal candle you can get little blocks of beeswax um i've got some from a timber yard um oddly um and it does exactly the same you can also use big mama's butter but with that being slightly softer um it's harder to kind of be precise with the application of big mama's butter if you wanted something that was really chippy and really distressed big mama's butter would be quite a good one to do because you could kind of add it in larger areas this one it just because obviously it's a hard it's a hard candle it allows you to just kind of rub it over corners and that's where i kind of want to concentrate most of my distressing so i'm just going to add it kind of randomly in some areas down the side, round there. I don't want it all over and I don't want it to look too uniform because obviously that's going to then look like I've intended it to be there. I just kind of want this to be quite a naturally looking distressed piece. <laughs> the dog is literally just there staring at me. So let me know who's watching, where you're watching from, what you're up to at the minute. Just gonna have a little sip of water, gotta stay hydrated. Um, oh, that's the one. So let me know also, let me know if you're a retailer for Dixie Bell. Drop that in the comments, drop your shop name in the comments, drop your location in the comments, because I get asked all the time, where can I buy Dixie Bell paint from? Even when I'm on the Dixie Bell page, like I'm on now, I'm on the Dixie Bell YouTube channel, people ask me all the time. So drop that location, drop your location in there, drop your watching from. If you're watching on the replay, also drop a comment because I'll come back and I'll look at the comments. And while you're there, make sure you're subscribing to the Dixie Bell YouTube channel because uh, as well as myself on here, there's an absolute ton of amazing furniture painters and also videos that go way way back so if you're looking for particular information about a product um you're in the right place um i am from the uk right in the center of the uk so i'm using a premium chip brush which um is going to give me some texture hi hannah and i'm just going to and it's raining. Only this would happen to me in a heat wave, trying to paint outside and it's raining. I, I, I don't, 
I can't. I don't even know what to say. I'm going to continue. Show must go on. Um, I'm just going to apply this. No water, apart from the rain. Apart from the rain. Um, no water. I'm not going to use a Mr. Bottle or anything. Literally, the one time I decide to come outside and do a live and it rains. I mean, it's quite refreshing, I'm not going to lie, but I wouldn't advise painting outside in the rain. It's probably not the best move in the world. Um, so, literally just going to apply this in a very quick and kind of random way, going layering over the red. So you don't have to stick to exactly the same placement as the red. You can overlap the white as well or the drop cloth I should say it's not it's not white it's off white um well this is weird isn't it live on Dixie Bell's YouTube channel outside in the rain <coughs> how bizarre so yeah you don't have to be precise with this this actually is not even hardly going to be seen you're only going to see a small amount of the blue small amount of the red um, it's not going to be a prominent colour. The next colour that I'm going to use is caviar. Um, but how pretty is that blue? It's so lovely. It's one of my all-time favourite Dixie Bell colours. It's so pretty. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I'm sitting here in the rain. <laughs> so bizarre. Uh, of all the things in a heatwave, I would not have put money on it raining. Um... Yeah, exactly. It is awesome. Painting in the rain, you know, as you do. It's not even like a tiny bit of rain. It's actually, there's, there's quite a lot as well. This is the UK. This is the UK. Heat wave. Amber, or in some areas, I think there's a red weather warning for the heat wave because it's that hot and we're not used to it. People are literally going, keeling over in the heat and then it rains. And all the farmers have got hay out in the fields as well. And you don't want rain on hay. <laughs> so that's going to not be great for them. Anyway, so you can see here, I'm not even covering all of it. There's still areas where you can see a bit of the red. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. This is a really easy technique. All you've got to do is make sure you've got layers. Don't use water. Use quite thickish paint. So... Like I say, aside from the rain, I'm not using any water. I'm not using a continuous mister bottle to spritz this. I want the application of paint to be quite thick and textured. So I'll bring you in to show what I mean. Oh, two seconds. So can you see here, obviously some of the texture is from the original base colour, which was the drop cloth mixed with sea spray. They're kind of the really high peaks but you can see some of the red showing through and you've also got areas where I've applied the blue quite thickly but I'm hoping you can see the kind of thing that I'm trying to build up so I'm trying to build up areas of sort of thicker application of colour and then areas where you can see like here you can see honky tonk red here you can see the drop cloth peeking through so it's all about variation um, I've said it before and I'll say it again uh, this kind of distress look works better if you are not consistent with the application of a paint, basically. So if you can keep it quite random and areas of thickness, areas of texture, when you distress it all back, it's going to look a little bit more authentic. Or that's the idea anyway. And the really good thing about this is you could do this and then somebody else could follow this tutorial do exactly the same kind of technique, but the piece would turn out differently because you're putting it on quite randomly and how you distress it can affect the outcome as well. So it's quite a cool technique because you could do it time and time again, which I have done with lots of different colorways. So the three colors that I'm used so far, drop cloth, honky tonk red, and the gulf, which is the blue that I'm using now. These three colors I have used on more than two occasions because I like how they look all together. They're really sort of contrasting and opposite and they give like a really funky industrial vibe. But you could use this with technique with any colours. You could, as long as you do a minimum of kind of two colours, you kind of get that distressed look. If you didn't want it as sort of contrasting, what you could do is get two colours that are quite close to one another. Um, evergreen and collard greens. 
So for more of a like a two-tone effect, a little bit more subtle, if that makes sense. You could also do it with yellow. So you could do um, like a rebel yellow with daisy over the top. You know, it's just so that it's, there's two shades of a similar-ish colour, two shades of yellow, two shades of green, two shades of blue. It gives a little bit more subtlety than what I'm doing here. Um, rain's gone, sun's come out now. Weather update for you. It's so weird, so weird. Um, so yeah, you can vary, you can do whatever colours you like. You can, you can take this and you can do whatever colours you like. Another one that I've done is orange, antebellum blue and daisy. That was a crazy colourful piece. So it is something that you can kind of play around with. You could also do this in neutrals. I think it'd look kind of cool in neutrals, neutrally colours. I think that'd look cool. And the other thing you can do to build up the texture is just go back over where you've applied paint as it started to dry. This is everybody's worst nightmare if you're a smooth kind of no texture painter and just kind of start to as the paint's drying, what you normally want to do is leave it well alone. Um, but I'm doing the opposite here and I'm kind of disturbing the paint as it's drying, which means you get really interesting texture again. It kind of, I can't describe what it does, but it, it basically just disturbs the paint as it's drying, which again, like I say, normally don't want to do that. Uh, but I do in this case. It's nice that the peacocks have, have been quiet for me. They were just making a weird noise a minute ago. And I thought, yeah, they are going to interrupt me, but they haven't. So I'm just going to finish off doing this little bit. And then I'm going to pop off because all I've got to do is the same thing to the other three sides. Um, and then leave it to dry. So each layer we're going to leave to dry down before we apply the next layer. The reason for that is we don't want any colours mixing. Um, well, I don't, not for this particular look anyway. So I will be back on my own YouTube channel. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back. I'll be back. That was Arnie impression for you, if you're wondering. Um, a terrible one at that, but there we go. I'll be back tomorrow on my own YouTube channel with the next layer of this the next and final layer of this actually, which is caviar. <coughs> and then all we've got to do is distress it. So um, we're nearly done people, we're nearly done. Then we can move on to another project. I feel like this coffee table has been in my life far too long and I need to I need to finish it and, and get rid of it. So that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Um, I'll be back, like I say, on my own YouTube channel um, with the Probably won't be the last live because I've got to do waxes and stuff. But it will be the last colour that I apply, which is going to be caviar. So I will hopefully catch some of you then on my own YouTube channel. Like I say, make sure you are subscribing to the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribing to my channel, which is Faf Designs. And make sure you tap the notification bell because that tells you when there's a new video posted or someone's going live so that you never miss us, me, slash me, us. Um, and that's all I'm gonna do today because I'm hot, I'm melting. I am melting. So I will see you all same time next week for hopefully the wrap up of this. We can get it finished off. And thank you for joining me. Thank you for bearing with me in the heat slash rain slash dog attack, all the rest of it. And I'll catch you all next week. Bye.